When I think back, it's just like a dream. When I was little, people told me that I was pretty and was a good girl. My mom said I care too much about my appearance. She was a teacher in Lutai, number one elementary school. There is a saying in my town that a teacher from that school is as powerful as the mayor. At that time, all officials in our town fought to get their children into my mom's class. Back then, I was very happy. But later on, my father was sent to a labor camp, and my mom was under house arrest in her school. I lived with my mom in a very small room in the school. A female teacher was with us every night as a guard. We couldn't go grocery shopping. We could only take a shower once a month. Both mom and I had eczema. I had very low self-esteem at that time because I saw on TV that my father was handcuffed and scolded on camera. My father was a TV anchor in the local TV station. Everybody knew him. Maybe that's why he was treated like that. I couldn't understand because those people who arrested him used to be his friends. Before the persecution started, Falun Gong practitioners in our neighborhood came to my home to study scripture together every night. But one day, nobody came. The sitting mats were still in our living room, but nobody came since that day. People say everything in life is cyclical. It really is. I remember that when I was little, my parents would always bring me to the park to join the group exercises of Falun Gong. After the persecution began, we suddenly became the enemy of the state overnight. I used to believe that good is good, bad is bad, truth is never false, and the false is never to be true. As time went by, I started to realize that sometimes, things can be flipped upside down. So I don't have to look at the world the same way as everyone else. Hello? When I was little, I always saw my father on TV. <laughs> now I'm following in his footsteps. Life is interesting. During the hard times, the pain feels endless. But now, when I look back, had I not persisted at that time, I wouldn't have a life like this.
When I was in first grade, because my father was not around, I was often bullied. Once, I forget why, but a group of boys came up to me and beat me. Maybe they thought I was an easy target because I had no one to protect me. I felt a bit wronged and told my mom what happened. But I said to her, it's okay. A practitioner should forbear. I'm all right. My mom said I did the right thing. We had no money to buy new clothes, so I had to wear old ones that were too small. Mom would cut open the ankle part of my old socks and sew them onto my leggings to make them longer. They looked funny, but fit nicely. My family's living situation used to be really good, but all of a sudden it became miserable. Everything was like, I more or less became the poorest in my class. At that time, my mom was not allowed to teach. She was assigned to some menial work. Many parents wanted her to teach but couldn't do anything. They felt it was a pity that such a good teacher wasn't allowed to teach. At that time, we found chances to make truth clarification flyers and video CDs. We made many of them. Later, someone reported my mom. One day, I saw my mom surrounded by many teachers. It was a very big room with a lot of people there. When they saw me, they said to my mom, you may stay with your child for a while. Then my mom told me, Fuya, I have to run away. You should listen to your grandma. You should be a good kid. Back then, I had no idea what was going on. I asked, where are you going? Why do you say that? That noon, all the school officials were searching for my mom like crazy. The police were searching too, but they didn't find her. I had nowhere to go. I had no relatives anywhere else. I just sat on the bus. I boarded the bus at 2 p.m. and sat on it until it was dark outside. After escaping from my hometown, I stayed in a few different places, like Pingchuan and Jiangjiakou. I also went to Beijing. I met another practitioner who also ran away from her hometown. We distributed flyers together and put up signs. 
later in Pingchuan. The signs we had written and put up were traced back to us by the police, so we left for another city. The guard was very excited. Wow, Falun Gong, like he won a lottery, because he would get a cash reward for that. At the time, I could have run away because there were a few people between that practitioner and me. But I thought, what would happen to her if I escaped? So I didn't leave. I threw materials everywhere. I shouted, you were fed lies. Those who set themselves on fire on Tiananmen Square do not practice Falun Gong. Then a lot of police ran towards me. Chuya 你爸妈都进监狱了,你还说法轮功好? He said, how dare you still say Falun Gong is good while your parents are in jail? At that moment, I really had no idea how to respond, so I didn't say a word. I felt I was singled out. I felt awful. But I couldn't tell my family what happened, so I just cried alone. As I grew up, I have had doubt in my heart. I questioned myself, should I persist or not? When I first saw mom, she looked different from before. I didn't know if she was abused or not allowed to eat. She looked skinny. But her hug was still so warm. I put my head on her shoulder and touched her hair. 
Then she turned me around to redo my ponytail. After she made my hair, I cherished it so much that I didn't want to put it down or wash it. She later told me that the meeting was a big encouragement for her. She felt relieved. It was very hard back then. I was looked down on and left out, especially for a child that was really painful. But I knew Falun Dafa is right. In the classical stories, those noble people who did the right thing might be slandered, or be deprived of their ranks, or even be killed. But they always stayed innocent and righteous. Their names are remembered forever. I was arrested in Pingchuan together with the other practitioner. In the detention center, we started a hunger strike. I was detained for 11 days, and I didn't eat for 11 days. He slapped me with a lot of force. I heard a big humming, and then all of a sudden I couldn't hear anything. Since then, my hearing has been bad. My daughter visited me twice a year. During school time, our family wouldn't allow her to come because she needed to concentrate on her studies. I wouldn't allow her to come either. But when the school was not in session, I desperately looked forward to her visit. Back then, when I visited my mom, I didn't know her hearing was damaged. She didn't tell me. Because my parents were not around, I was depressed. Like all of a sudden, I had become much more mature. I knew I shouldn't disturb the adults or make any trouble. 
I should just behave myself, just go to school, eat well, and grow up healthy. That's all. I just wanted to be a good kid, like my parents told me to, and to be truthful, kind, and forbearing. In my understanding, practicing cultivation just meant being a better kid than the others and being the best I could be. My parents were not around, so I lived with grandma in my aunt's home from the time I was 10. I heard a lot of kids playing outside and I wanted to play with them, but I didn't dare to. They all knew I was not the child of this family. They knew why I was there. I was afraid that, like before, after playing for a while, their parents would tell them, don't play with her, she has no future, it's dangerous to be with her. On one visiting day, I was not allowed to see my family because I refused to give up my belief. There was a sandstorm outside, very severe, the sky was very dark. Others who had visitors finished their reunions in the morning. I felt sad that nobody from my family had come. In the afternoon, around 2 p.m., a prison guard took me out and said, your family has come to see you, your kid is here, you can wait there. Mama! Mama! My daughter came in from behind me. When I saw her, my heart was wrenching. Her whole face and her hair were covered with sand, everything except her eyes. Her face was covered in dust. When I saw that, my tears just fell. She said, Mom, don't cry. My grandmas are outside. The police won't let them in. Then she said, Mom, I have great news for you. Dad will be freed in two years and eight months. I already knew when he would be released. I felt so sad when I heard her say that. Fu Yao suffered a lot. But despite that, whenever I saw her, she always appeared delighted. She shone like the sun. Even on the day of the sandstorm, with her face covered in dust, she still looked radiant. The thing I feared most in the prison was not the physical suffering, but the forceful brainwashing. They have quotas to brainwash Falun Gong practitioners. Their promotions and bonuses are connected to it. What is the so-called transformation? The police torture you by all means, to break your physical and mental limits. They want you to give in under the extreme conditions. They force you to write all kinds of statements to renounce your belief against your will. You are forced to write them over and over and over again. They made you do these shameful things, this so-called transformation, and the pain that brings. It's unbearable. Once, they wouldn't let me sit in the lotus position, yet I still did that, because sitting in lotus position helps me to strengthen my positive thoughts. I did what they didn't allow me to do because I didn't want to fall for their brainwashing tactics. 
The prisoners in my room got really angry, so they beat me. One started, and the others had to follow, because they need to show they follow those in charge. Some of them actually didn't want to, but they had to fake it, while some others beat me very heavily. At that time, I recalled something my husband told me before. He said if you are involved in a group fight, you just hold one person and punch him or her intensively. The heavier you punch that one person, the sooner they will let you go. Then I thought, this inmate is much shorter than me. If I beat her, I can easily push her down. But I kept my hands down. While she was beating me, I actually thought of punching back a few times. But I remembered my teacher's words, you shouldn't hit back when hit, or talk back when insulted. I thought, I shouldn't fight back. So I decided to endure it without punching back. The first time I wrote to mom, I was living with grandma in my aunt's house. I asked my grandma what I should write. She said, you can tell her to be steadfast in her belief. I didn't know how to express that. Then I thought of using the word principle. Everyone has his or her own principles. People should stick to their principles, no matter what situation they run into. I usually wrote in blue ink, like I did for my homework. But to make it stand out, I used black ink to write that specific sentence, so that she could really understand my intentions. These are the letters I have kept all these years. I read them a lot. Sometimes at night, after I finished my homework, Reading their letters gave me a sense of comfort. I would have a calmer attitude, ready to face another day. It really was a kind of connection through our hearts, even though we were so far apart. Reading the letters gave me a feeling of having the love of my mom and dad right there beside me, and it didn't feel so depressing anymore. 经典连连放，感谢各位的收听。嗯，刚才有一条即时路况是说，陈金路西段上目前是大堵车，希望交警尽快赶到现场协调一下。非常感谢大家在这个不影响正常安全驾驶的前提下，尽快把路况发送过来
Like you, I feel sad for your losing this friend. I agree with your reasons as to why you lost Sun Jia. As you can see, if people don't work hard and don't respect others, they would lose their best friends even if they wear the finest clothes. Learn the lesson. Study hard to catch up. Respect others and treat others well. If you keep doing that, you will find everything will be fine. Mom, thank you for the beautiful card you made. I think you and Dad are my real friends, aren't you? I'm confused. Why have I become the kind of girl that everyone hates? I'm so selfish, man. I often fight and argue with classmates. I even push my deskmate to the ground. So I don't have many real friends. And I like to speak sarcastically. How shall I improve myself? Hey, Li Fei, your name? Your mom is in jail. Dear daughter, how are you? After reading your letter, I am very happy. You consider Dad and I as your real friends. Thank you for your trust. I know you regret something you did recently. Please don't feel too bad. How can you be a girl everyone hates? If you smile a lot and are nice to others, who will hate a happy and nice little girl? Do you still remember the country song by Old Wolf called My Deskmate? Please imagine if many years later your current classmate wants to write a song called My Deskmate. What will he write about you? Haha, <laughs> just joking. I know you will do well. You will win many more friends with your sincerity. When I first entered the prison, I had a thought. With a seven-year prison term, they deprived me of the best time to educate my child. They deprived me of the best years of my life. What is left is my belief, nothing else. I want to persist in my belief, my way of life. In prison, they don't allow you to sit in lotus position because they think you are practicing meditation when your legs are crossed. They ask people to sit with their legs straight. The police used all kinds of methods to stop me from sitting in lotus position. They cuffed me to my bed. I then started a hunger strike. The first time when I was cuffed to the bed, 
I felt pain all over. Then I started to recite the scriptures by my teacher. I remember teacher wrote in the scripture, path. Cultivation is hard. It's hard in that even when a terrible calamity strikes, even when evil madly persecutes, and even when your life is at stake, you still have to be able to steadfastly continue on your path of cultivation without letting anything in human society interfere with the steps you take on your path of cultivation. Enlightenment. In the muddy human world, pearls and fish eyes are jumbled together. A Tathagata must descend to the world quietly. When he teaches the far, evil practices are bound to interfere. The Tao and the demonic ways are taught at the same time and in the same world. Amidst truth and falsehood, enlightening is important. How to distinguish them? There are bound to be exceptional people. Those who really have a predestined relationship and can enlighten will come one after another, entering the Tao and obtaining the Fa. They will distinguish the righteous from the evil, obtain true teachings, lighten their bodies, enhance their wisdom, enrich their hearts, and board the boat of the Fa, sailing smoothly. How wonderful! Strive forward with every effort until consummation. Those who survive the world without direction and with poor enlightenment quality live for money and die for power, being joyful or anxious over petty gains. They compete bitterly against each other, thus accruing karma throughout their lives. I kept reciting teacher's scriptures. I strengthened my resolve. I thought, no matter how hard this path would be, no matter how they cuff me or mistreat me, I will keep going. On the fifth day, they released me from the bed. One of the inmates brought a basin and let me wash my face. The police guard in charge of me asked me, why did you suffer so much for just a sitting position? I said, because this is the sitting position of the Buddha. It is the most noble position. She smiled and didn't say anything. Dear daughter, how are you? A few days ago I sent you a letter. I wonder if you have received it. Are you in a good mood now? Do you have a smile on your face? I always pray for your happiness, health and a balanced mindset. Fu Yao, do you know? A person will encounter all kinds of challenges during their lifetime. On a smaller scale, 
There may be misunderstandings from parents, siblings, classmates or teachers. On a bigger scale, you may be wronged by the country. If someone gets a little distrust or misunderstanding and he thinks of death, then how many times would he die? You liked to read Journey to the West when you were little. In that, the monk said, it is hard to get a human body. It is hard to be born in the Middle Kingdom. It is hard to hear the Buddha law. Life is so precious. How can you give yourself up? I felt like I had grown up already. During middle school and high school, I had some struggles. For example, I had some complaints about my relatives and was kind of rebellious. I wondered, what is the point of living? Why can't my life be normal, like everyone else's? Why are my parents not around? Why is the school environment like this? Why don't I have money or anything else? So I asked my mom. Mom replied, My sad child, come with me to experience nature. Look at the green meadow, the flying dragonflies, the clever mantis, the gliding waterfowl, the leisurely swimming fish, the fine spider webs. These tiny living beings manifest nature's selflessness, splendor, and diversity. When the spring flowers are blown off from the branches by the wind, do you hear them groan? When the autumn moon is covered by clouds, do you hear it complain? When the summer rain dances with thunder, do you hear it laugh? When winter snow is melted by the sun, does it cry? Because they know whether it is bitterness or happiness, these are all the feelings of life. They are all elements of the universe. Just like how you once comforted me, happiness is exciting, but isn't pain also beautiful? We, we human, human beings, beings are, are the wisest, wisest of all creatures. We can feel the meaning of life even more. My child, you are a wonderful element in the universe. How do you feel now? Come with me to enjoy the lotus blooming in the pond. Do you know? Not all lotus seeds bloom. When the seeds are spread in the mud, some get desperate seeing how filthy the mud is. They don't believe beautiful flowers can grow out of it. And gradually, they die out of depression. Some other seeds are so sick of the bad smell and filthiness of the mud, they quarrel with it all day long. As time passes, they miss the blooming season, turn black, and later become part of the mud. There are also some seeds that quietly forbear the sarcasm and ridicule of the mud. They try to get along with it and absorb nutrition from it. They believe that, sooner or later, they will grow beautiful flowers. Finally, one day, they break through the mud and produce sacred lotus flowers. To thank the mud, they leave their white root for it. Look, my child, for those lotus seeds, each different mindset produces a different result. The day mom was released from prison, we went to pick her up. From far away, she looked like she was glowing. Her skin was so fair, and wearing the new clothes we bought for her, 
She looked completely different from seven years ago. She looked so beautiful, like a fairy. Her skin looked totally different. Her skin tone used to be a little yellowish, but that day when I saw her, it was so fair. From afar, she looked like a lotus flower. A prison guard who used to be in charge of me, she ran over. She held onto my arm and said, please don't hate me, please don't hate me. I could feel her guilt for persecuting me and telling the prisoners to beat me. I could feel it. I felt that everyone has good nature in their heart. That gave me a feeling of relief. Returning home was a milestone, a milestone for me. I no longer had to wonder, when would my parents come home? I didn't have to think about that anymore. Then I started to think about what I had been holding on to for all these years. For a few days, I was thinking about that. A few days later, at noon one day, I saw my mom and told her, I want to practice cultivation now. It was like a new chapter being unfolded. My childhood had passed. I needed to think seriously about how to live up to the standards of a cultivator, which is more than just being a good kid. I think for so many years I was enduring, but I felt it was unfair and I had resentment. But teacher says, to endure completely without anger or grievance is the forbearance of a cultivator. I then realized, oh, this mindset, this spirit, is what a practitioner should achieve. I just felt, I suddenly understood everything. I understood everything that day.